we're going to give you something a little different in this little extra added drop. Oh, yeah. Number one is we are getting out of our own way with being old. I have a family (laughs) member who was like, are you on TikTok? And I said, nope, too old. Don't know how to use TikTok. And she gave me an edumacation. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I learned a few things. I've dabbled on TikTok, <laughs> but it just I, I I got on it during the pandemic because I was bored and then uh, I just couldn't keep up with it. And now I have like 100 people messaging me TikToks that I've never looked at on there. Yeah. First of all, TikTok is dangerous. You lose a whole day in that place. You're just sitting there scrolling. You're like, oh, my God, puppies and babies. And that's and what would happen. Things. I would I would get on. I'm telling myself I'd get on for five minutes. Next thing I know, it was like four hours, two hours. And yeah. then my algorithms now fixed. So it's like it's only <laughs> it's only showing me like cats attacking humans or cats <laughs> riding other animals or like. <laughs> so, so. Guess what, everyone? We have a TikTok. It is at Crime of the Arts Podcast, just like all of our other handles. You can find us across every platform on the same handle, at Crime of the Arts Podcast. Come get us. So we have been posting little snippets of our episodes each week. Try and get a little teaser out there, give you a taste of what's to come. Part of what we're going to do today is just tell you like a little insight about who we are, how we met, how we became friends, and how this podcast even became a thing. And part of that has to do with my love of true crime podcasts. So this week, I am going to Obsessed Fest as a fangirl. (laughs) I have been listening to the Obsessed Network podcasts for a very long time. I bought tickets for the everything. I have a huge package back in April, long before. Long before she created this. (laughs) Even a a reality for us. And it was just, you know, I, I called my aunt. I bought these tickets. And she's coming up to come with me. We're going to drive to Columbus and I'm going to stream for you on TikTok, on the Crime of the Arts podcast TikTok from Obsessed Fest. Some of my favorite podcasters are going to be there. Jillian and Patrick from True Crime Obsessed. Ellen and Joey from Obsessed with Disappeared. Brandy and Kristen from Let's Go to Court. I mean, it's going to be awesome. Rabia Chaudhry is coming. She is the advocate for Adnan Syed, who just got released from prison mm-hmm. a week ago. And there's so many more. There, I'm going to live shows. I'm going to panels. Payne Lindsay from Up and Vanish is going to be there. I mean, it's just a, it's a, it's a full on obsession that I have. And they're all in one place. <laughs> it's going to be a crazy time, a good time and a formative time. I'm going to be there in spirit. I'm trying to figure out a way to get there last second. We'll see. Maybe one day <laughs> we'll she. See. We'll see. Maybe she'll be in the middle of streaming at the bar, and, and I just maybe, pop up out of nowhere. Pops up. Yeah. Who, who knows? <laughs> but no, seriously, for those that have been listening to us the whole time, we just want to say thank you so much for thank listening you. and the following us and uh, on all of our social media and just you know giving us feedback. We really do appreciate that because you guys are the foundation on this now. For some of you guys, and I know because some of you have asked me, you have asked Lisa, you're like, what's it like to run a podcast? Definitely follow those TikToks, because not only are you going to see what this crazy life of podcasting is about, she's going to be in like the underbelly of it with some of the best. So you're, oh, I'm you're so excited. You're going to see <laughs> this this whole gathering of some of the best podcasters. And it's not just a, a platform to is you know go there and see who's the best it's also to help nurture fellow podcasters no matter Mm -hmm. what part of uh, the game they're at whether you already have a podcast or if you're just in a brainstorming like there's going to be people of all levels there uh it's going to be inspirational informative motivational so definitely follow us to see that inside life yeah and they're going to be premiering a podcast that's new on for Robbie Ashadri. There's going to be live recordings of podcasts. I mean, it's, and there's just going to be discussion panels. There's karaoke. Cause these are our people. I don't know how I found these people, <laughs> but I found my people. <laughs> They're doing karaoke and true karma says jeopardy and family feud. And there's cocktail hour. I mean, it's going to be fantastic. So please check us out on TikTok. I am super amped to go there. Justin, five-year goals <laughs> is to have someone ask us to be there. Yes, <laughs> Not yes. Not a thing to go there. <laughs> Just put that, manifest that in the universe. Yeah, so I just really am looking forward to meeting some of the people who helped spark this desire in me to kind of pull this podcast together. I guess I'll just start and give you a little insight on my life and then 
will tell you how we met after Justin tells you about his. I am um, 35. I live in Nashville. I don't have family around here. We got more and more coming in, but it's mostly my family, my close family, my husband. I have a son. He's two. His name's Riley. My husband's name is Michael. You know, and I have a typical mom life. My whole life is dedicated to my family and my job. And I needed to find something that was just for me. So after buying those tickets to this podcast and having this desire and this idea of what is specific enough that no one else is talking about, Mm -hmm. and it's this niche of all of these crimes being based in the creative arts. That's one, what I know. I know the creative arts. I have worked in the creative industry. And then Justin came on board. (laughs) I called him one day and was like, hey, man, this idea, what do you think about this? Are you going to try and do this with me? (laughs) Um, and in my previous life, I was a stage manager. So he was like, yeah, well, you you organized all of this. I completely trust your abilities. I was like, I'm sure you already have a pitch. So just give it to me now. <laughs> and she had it all already mapped out. And I was like, obviously, because again, like we went to school together. You know, we went to college together. That's how we've mm-hmm. met. We, we've known each other for like over 17 years at this point in time. Uh, we yep. went to school for theater together. We both have worked professionally uh, within the realms of theater. She's done stage management. I've done professional acting. Once upon a time, we also owned a theater company together. And ran one. And, and ran one with a group of our <laughs> friends as well. So, you know, we're no strangers to this stuff. And once upon a time, I had in my past life, too, I had a podcast as well dealing with a different topic. So it's one of those things, like when you have friends that are creative, especially on a professional level, sometimes you're like, oh, do I want to work with them? Because you're not sure if they're going to be committed, things like that. But because Mm -hmm. Lisa and I came from that same circle and she's so organized and literally she came into that phone call as if she was pitching this to probably how she's going to do it at (laughs) Obsess Fest. She's like, this is my concept. This is my format. This is my goals. This is the kind of chemistry I'm looking for. And I was like, yo, you have it all together. And, you know, (laughs) pandemic, I, for the record, yes, I'm 36. I live in New Jersey. I'm a flight attendant for some of you guys now. And I still. He has a beautiful girlfriend who looks like Taylor Swift. (laughs) I do have a very beautiful girlfriend who hates being referred to as a Taylor Swift look like. (laughs) To the point where she removed her bangs, people, because she she got. She she grew those. She, that. Grew, gorgeous. she doesn't like the comparison, but uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I, I'm very fortunate. <laughs> yes. But um, even with my job as a flight attendant, everything else, you know, professional wise, I still want to act. It's just pandemic mm-hmm. happened. Things slowed down. So once Lisa pitched this to me, too, I was like, this is another great creative outlet where I still get to be creative. And it's something I'm passionate about, too, because it's within the field of the arts. And again, we just vibe well. At least we hope you think we vibe well when you're listening. You let us know. I I edit our episodes and I think we're funny. So I guess that's going to have to be good enough. for us. That's good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we, we do this out of a love for doing it. And it's really cool because as long as we have been friends, we don't get to spend time like this together. Exactly. And now we have this like whole new built in part of our relationship that allows us to just be like, dude, what happened to your day today? Exactly. <laughs> Technology for the win. Oh, it's amazing. So OK, so do you actually remember the day we met? Because Ooh. I'm about to give a shout out to one of our you know, I'm not going to be offended if you don't. One of our prominent listeners, <laughs> <laughs> a friend of ours is the reason that you and I met and I will never forget it because it was kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to take a guess here. I want to okay. say it was your first semester there, like my second uh-huh. or third. Uh, it was during our rehearsals. For those of you who don't know, we went to school for theater and there would be two shows each semester. And sometimes the rehearsals overlapped. And I was in a show called John Peel Myers, The Boys of Winter. It's a bunch of Marines. It's like a suicide mission Christmas. I'm not going to get into that. Crazy show. And at the same time, the second show that year was called Women on Fire, and it was an all girl show. So both of these rehearsals where it's all men in one theater and all girls in another. A lot of hormones going yeah, on there's in a lot college. Of hormones <laughs> going on. But I feel like I want to say the first time I met you was, in fact, a uh, my character, he had like recordings of his girlfriend and we needed someone to record that. <laughs> and the person that we had is a very, very good friend, very active listener. Uh, Christina Pitter, we're going to throw your name out there. No, uh, no, that's not it. OK, well, I'll no. tell that story another time. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually not the first time I met you. I was 
standing in the courtyard. So in our school building, <laughs> we had one building that we always convened in. That's where all of our core classes were for theater. And there was this infamous courtyard that we all lived in pretty much. I lived out there because I was a smoker at the time. Did, yeah, smokers damn sure lived out there. And the rest I of us did. just hung out out there to hang out <laughs> because out that's there. Where everyone was. That's yeah. where everyone was. Yeah, we had no choice. <laughs> so uh, I was out there smoking a cigarette and there was a bunch of people and I'm like trying to make friends. You know, it's like probably like the first week of school. So I don't even think auditions happened yet for those shows. And Adrian is standing outside. Now, this is for you, buddy, because this is pretty much <laughs> you're the reason that we're friends. I'm sure we would have become friends, Justin. But yeah, Adrian, no, he, he's the reason. He's he's talking to me. He's, Adrian, you have the best personality. You're all energy and smiles, and he's so welcoming. And I was like, oh my god, thank God I met this person. He's so nice. Like everyone else will hopefully be as nice as he is. And then he looks at me and he goes, "Have you met my brother?" <laughs> I'm like, oh no. my god. <laughs> No, you have a brother here? I have no idea. Fast forward like four minutes and on cue, Justin comes walking down this hallway and it's glass that you could see through from <laughs> outside. And he's like, oh, it's my brother right there. And I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. And he, he starts waving Justin outside. Come here. Come and he introduced us. That was the first time I met you. And I legit thought you were brothers because he said that. So like, oh, I wouldn't I believe him. <laughs> I remember that now because for any of you that know Adrian, he's an amazing guy, lovable guy, great personality. <laughs> You know, sometimes he's a little ADD. He'll give you that. But that day, he must have said that to like seven new people in like all stages of my life that day. Whenever I walked over to someone and the thing is, like, he's the type of guy he'll be in a conversation with one group of people. So literally he was talking to Lisa, then he was talking to someone else. And then literally he's like, here's my brother and basically dragged her as I'm coming through the hallway thing. And she's just looking like this is my brother. And I'm like, I'm not related to this man, but uh (laughs) I do not know this person. Oh my God. Hysterical. What great memories. Yeah. So thanks, Adrian. And thanks for always listening. Yes. Thank you. And thank you for always listening. Can't wait to hear your thoughts on this one. Yeah. Do you have some questions? All right. How serious do we feel like getting? Yeah. Bring bring it. Bring it on. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling. We'll see. (laughs) I mean, I think you touched on it a little bit, but but why why do we do this? You know, why why did this come to fruition? For me, like I said, it was kind of like a little bit of a selfish thing where I just wanted to dedicate some of my creative energy into something that was just for me and just mine outside of the other responsibilities in my life. Also, I've been watching every true crime show that has ever been in existence since I was a child, (laughs) which is bizarre. (laughs) But yeah, I've always been a true crime junkie. And it's really fun to be able to tell stories. You know, our process, we have sources that we're pulling this information from. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm just grateful to have the opportunity to share a story in some kind of manner that gives me an outlet (laughs) for all of this pent up creative energy that I have. I also, at this point in our game, we're almost 20 hours into recording this and I've been learning how to edit them, which is super cool. So it's just giving me a whole new structure in my life of something else that I'm learning and figuring out and finding out that I could pretty much do whatever I put my mind to. So I'm I'm really thankful for this podcast for that reason. Very well said. And I mean, in terms of the editing, editing is never an easy feat. And the fact that Lisa has been like, taking the time to not only learn it, but to adapt like what she's learning and reapply. Like she's, she's going with the flow each episode and it's created this wonderful progression. But I think to answer your question, yeah, we touched on it a little bit. It's nice to just be in a creative zone again, quite a bit and uh, get to expel some of that and have something creative of your own. I really do like the context of it as well. I've always, Again, in my household, it's like investigation, discovery. All of these things are always <laughs> yeah. once upon a time on in my in my household when I lived with my mom. So by nature, like I started watching all of that and being obsessed with it, too. So when you brought the concept to me, I'm like, all right, it's the best of both worlds. We're discussing all of these crimes in like almost an investigation manner. But you get to do it in a manner with your friends. And like, again, it's great working with you as well. That was one of the most enticing things. I'm like, we can just... Because we've always been kind of drift compatible, so we could kind of just go with the flow and see what happens. Um, Well, I think that something that's interesting about our podcast compared to some others is you bring 
something different to the table that other other podcasts of this format maybe don't have where you have this uh, pop culture m- movie insight. You have all of the, the so much information in your head about film and TV that now that we're talking about these actors and these certain scenarios, you're like a vault of information about what <laughs> happened when they when they filmed it or whatever movie like they I I say titles of movies when I'm like talking about an actor that I was covering and you're like, oh yeah, I've seen that. And I'm like, yeah, I don't have a fucking clue that even existed. <laughs> so yeah, you bring this whole other element that makes this also have the room to kind of talk about movies and acting abilities and, you know, how the world perceived things. It's like this added layer of reviewing someone's talent or a storyline or whatever. I love that. I love that about what we've been doing. It's kind of come organically. That's not in our scripts that we've written to tell you the stories. That's just our conversation. (laughs) Exactly. And again, I mean, you're always on the grind. You've always been very detailed oriented, obviously stage manager in you. So it's like, when you come with a plan, you come with a plan. So everything is already there. And seriously, you're just always, your work ethic is like impeccable. You're always on the grind. Oh, thanks, you're, you're right away. She's like, I'm going to try to work on editing. I'm going to learn to edit so I can edit this. I could do these other things. Like she just never did. I ever edit anything before. Yeah. That's the thing about Lisa. She, she'll be like, well, fuck it. I'm going to try it. And she'll try something. And then from there, if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Let's try something else. But yeah, no, it's, it's, it's cool. And then again, the last point of it is what's cool about this too is, you know, just the demographic, which this podcast is in, it's not, you know, most people, when they think about trying to start a podcast, the number one question is always, where will this podcast fit? Is it already oversaturated? Things right. like that. The beautiful thing about this podcast is on the surface, if you just say crime, you're thinking, oh, it's oversaturated. But because of how we're blending this it really mm-hmm. isn't much. It's a little more niche. Yeah, it's a little more niche. Like, uh, you know, again, my former podcast was about movies and movie reviews. And it's uh, even that we we tried to find a way to get in there and make it somewhat different. But the fact remains that that is such an oversaturated thing. This yeah. is not. So I think that's also what plays a factor in uh, it kind of motivates us to keep going and keep being mm-hmm. creative with this, too, because there's so much room to play. So, yeah. And I think that originally when I had the idea, I was like, oh, shit, is there even enough here? But there's so much there's here. There's so much. There's I mean, so we much. We started writing our, our Google Doc list. And I feel like I go back and I look to try and like pick my next stories and, and I end up adding things and just moving on down the list further. I'm like, I haven't even touched that thing I put up in the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why we're here. That's a little bit about us. Check out our streaming on our TikTok and Facebook and Instagram in the next week or so. Hopefully, maybe you'll get us a little screaming Patrick or some yelling Ellen and <laughs> some sarcastic Jillian and Joey with his southernisms. And maybe we can get them on the TikTok. That would be fucking cool. Yeah, that would be dope. But I'm super excited. I mean, there's a lot of weird obstacles popping up right now in order for me to get there, but <laughs> damn it, come hurricane and high water. <laughs> I will drive by myself to Ohio to see and partake in this and I'll bring it all to you. And we're already looking at future events and things to go to together yep. too. So stay tuned with that. We're going to be popping up. We're going to be around. <laughs> yep. 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 And thank you, bud. You're so committed. I love doing this with you every week. I love working Um, with you too. And thank you for (laughs) including me again, you know. This is ours at this point. This isn't mine any longer. This is, this is our baby. (laughs) And yeah, I love it. I just love it. Until next time. Peace out, everybody. Peace out, everybody. (laughs) 